So the M2 chip is finally out and today we're going to be doing a bunch of game benchmark testing and in particular we're going to be comparing two specific chips, the new M2 chip against the old M1 chip and we're going to see how much faster the next generation of Apple Silicon really is. So today we're going to be comparing two specific laptops. On the right I have the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the new M2 chip. This has 10 GPU cores and 8 gigabytes of RAM and it also has active cooling as well with a single fan. On the left we have the original MacBook Air 2020 with the M1 chip, this has 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores and this is the completely fanless passive model. And today we're going to find out how much faster the M2 is compared to the M1 and which one you should be getting for gaming. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So first up is the AAA game Witcher 3. This is the Windows version running on Mac OS. And the performance here is not bad, especially considering that we're running through several compatibility layers. For example, this is an Intel binary running through Rosetta. And also the graphics are piped through two different compatibility layers. One is DirectX 2 Vulkan DXVK and the other is Molten VK, which translates Vulkan into metal. If you want to find out how to get Witcher 3 running on Apple Silicon Macs, then please make sure to check out the link in the description for my crossover Windows gaming tutorial. And you'll also find a video about how to upgrade DXVK and Molten VK so you'll get less lag and stuttering within the game. So here we're running The Witcher 3 at 1080p on medium settings and as you can see the MacBook Air on the left is getting around 27-28 frames per second and the M2 MacBook Pro on the right is getting about 42-43 frames per second and this represents approximately 55% increase in performance. And here even within some like open world combat sections we're getting a decent frame rate especially on the M2. And whilst I wouldn't advise anyone to buy an M2 MacBook Pro just to be able to play a game like The Witcher 3 a little bit better. If you did want to play The Witcher 3 you're going to get a better experience with the M2. So next up we're going to be looking at Minecraft which recently received a native ARM update in 1.19. Whilst the launcher itself remains an Intel application running through Rosetta, once Minecraft actually launches you'll see that the Java that it bundles with is a native ARM version of Java which means it runs much faster than the official Microsoft version of Minecraft 1.18. Here we're running at 1080p with distances set at 10 chunks and all other settings at default. And here we're comparing the M2 directly against the M1 in this static scene. And as you can see the M2 is around 100 50 or 160 frames per second faster than the original M1 and this represents approximately 50% increase in frame rate which is pretty huge. However a real test of performance is going to be shaders and this can dramatically change the way that Minecraft looks and feels. Here we're using Silda's Vibrant Shaders 1.32 Lite and we are using Iris 1.2.5 in order to load these shaders and all of these performance improvements have a pretty big impact on frame rate. Once again we can see that the M2 is running about 25 FPS faster than the original M1 and this is about 50% of an increase in performance. It is possible to run more graphically intensive shaders on the Apple Silicon Mac and basically the better looking the shader the more of a performance impact it's going to have. If you'd like to find out more about modding Minecraft and getting shaders working on the latest version of 1.19 then please make sure to check out the link in the description for my video tutorial on how to get Minecraft 1.19 working with shaders and get modding working too. So next up is Metro Exodus which I covered a little bit in my initial M2 MacBook Pro video and here we are seeing a much more dramatic increase in frame rate. On the right hand side with the M2 MacBook Pro we're getting roughly double the frame rate of the M1 and this is a way bigger increase than any of the games that I've showed so far running on the M2 and it shows how much better the M2 can perform against the M1. Here we're running on medium settings at 1080p and this is an Intel application running under the Rosetta 2 translation layer. And getting this to play at a solid 60 FPS would be quite easy to do. Just turn down a couple more settings or put it onto low and you'll be able to get a very smooth experience. So this is a really good sign for the future because the base M2 is going to be capable of running these types of AAA games. And it means even bigger increases for future chips like the M2 Pro or the M2 Max or M2 Ultra. So the last game we're going to be looking at today is Total War Warhammer 3 which released earlier in 2022. So the minimum hardware requirements for this game require an Apple Silicon Mac, however it is still an Intel application that's still running through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. It never ran particularly well on the original base M1 chip and given a game of this complexity on the battle map itself, running at 21 FPS on low settings at 1080p is not really that playable. However getting to 40 frames per second on the right with the M2 chip is just the right 
kind of sweet spot for a base level chip. And whilst I'd prefer to play this game on a really big screen with my Windows gaming PC, I think that being able to run this game portably, say with the MacBook Pro or a future M2 MacBook Air, getting about 40 FPS is an acceptable compromise. And it's good to see that the M2 is getting over 100% more frames than the original M1. However, that was just the battle benchmark. In the actual campaign map, where arguably people spend way more time playing, we are seeing an even higher lead for the M2 chip here, running at around 30, 32 FPS, where the M1 can barely keep up to 20 FPS and it sometimes dips into the single digits. So this is definitely one of the few cases where if you really want to play this game on the Apple Silicon Mac and you were choosing between the M1 or the M2 and you really, really wanted to play Total War Warhammer 3, then I definitely say the M2 chip is going to be the right choice, even though I still think that the M1 is probably one of the best value computers you could possibly buy. And most of the games I've been demonstrating so far actually run at an okay level on the M1 if you just turn down some settings. However, this is probably one of the few games where it's actually playable on the M2 where it really isn't playable on the M1. So anyway, please let me know what you think about gaming on the M2 and what you've seen so far. If you have any other game benchmark requests, then please leave a comment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.